This episode's brought to you by Red Cape Films. No, Frank, that's not gonna work. No, Frank, 13 Zions isn't good enough. We need 50. You know who's a good buy? Ronald Acuna. Okay, so we got 13 Acunas. 76 Zions? My man, that's actually many more Zions than we thought. 76 Frank, you're not listening to me. I literally left my job. I, I don't even have enough top loaders. I have to move cards now. My marriage is on the line. Luca is way better than Zion, Frank. Oh my goodness. Part one, how to grade your sports cards. Cause I got a lot of the cards that I need grading here, bud. All right, yeah. And don't forget the iced coffee. Today's episode is sponsored by FNC House of Cards, sports cards and collectibles, located in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Welcome everyone to yet another episode of Red Cape Sports. My name is Bird Bouchard and I am so very happy and honored to welcome to the channel our sponsor Frank. Frank, thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. Glad to help, glad to be here, uh, glad to help everyone understand how this process goes. All right, so you guys probably already know what we're going to do based on the title of this video. But today, I personally have a lot of questions and I'm sure most of you do as well. Um, Frank, take me through. So we have some cards here today. Um, I guess the first question even before we jump into anything is why, why would I even want to grade cards? Like, why isn't it just good to keep it as is? Like, why should I go about grading cards? It is good to grip. Uh, to uh, basically keep it as it is. Uh, grading cards has multiple reasons. One, and the main reason is you increase its value. Okay, graded cards always have higher value because collectors and anything, whether it was cards, cars, everything, they tend to chase something that is valuable because of its shape. Okay, a lot of people will demand the, the best of the best, the gem mint, the mint. Uh, people do it on different levels. Millionaire buy one of one cars, just so they say, I'm the only one that has one. Right. Other people, I would rather have my card in the best possible shape, just because I want it in the best possible shape. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, the main reason is the value, I mean, the value is huge difference and when you're talking about the same exact card ungraded it's worth for example a dollar a gem mint card is worth a hundred dollars so why wouldn't you want to grade it right for sure and now let's say this card here mm -hmm. um it's graded a nine this card right here this patrick kane now mm -hmm. does this uh stay a nine for for life or do i have to worry about ruining it uh no i mean it's a nine, and a nine in many standards, it's a mint card, and he even says it. Uh, it's not a gem mint, right? Like I said, uh, a lot of people will like the nine white because it comes cheaper. Right. Uh, most people were like, nine is mint, it's not a gem mint. I want a gem mint. I want a card that 10 years from now, I know what I have, that I have the best of the best, Right. okay? Uh, in my opinion, I always say, depending on the sport, nine, to me, it's equivalent to wrong. Because almost every card comes out of the back mint. You know? Yeah. Uh, it shouldn't be anything less than mint, because that's what the companies promise us, mint cards. So, when you have a nine, it's just like equivalent to a raw card that just came out of the pack. Uh, Value should be right around the same. Okay. Okay. Not to collectors. Collectors will look at nine as, oh, it's not perfect. There's an imperfection. No, it necessarily, uh, not necessarily means it's an imperfect card. It's just not the best one out there. Mm -hmm. And I see that we do have multiple cards here. Um, and one actually is graded while the other one isn't. So. When I'm looking to grade cards, so let's say that I finally decided to go ahead and grade cards, 
what am I looking to to see or to figure out as to which cards I should send off for grading? You have to look basically very closely. Uh, there's four things when you grade a card, four important, important things, which all companies look at. Centering, edges, surface, and corners. Okay. All you have to do, inspect them closely, really. But again, there's ways, and that's what we're here to teach you how to spot these things. The, most, the one that is the hardest is the centering because it's hard to tell which one is which is centered and which is not. And yes, uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would have the question that, oh, I have two cards that are different centering, but they still graded them a 10. Yes, it's possible. It's very possible. Uh, it's just not how it works, right. you know? Do you want to take your chances or do you want to know for sure? I personally, when I grade something, I want to know for sure. Yeah. Uh, let's take, for example, these three, these two cards right here. Okay. Look at them. I looked at them closely. And we have number one here. Or actually, let's go to this one here. When I looked at it, centering was pretty good. Okay. Uh, edges were okay. Corners were soft. You know, a lot of people would look at it and they're like, no, corners look perfect. But then again, what? Well, that's why we have this tool over here. Right. This helps me basically determine everything. I have told people that thought they have the best thing in the world that, no, it isn't. You know, mm -hmm. eh, some take it well, some don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For sure. Uh, for example, this card right here, if you can see, if you can see over here, it's got one soft white corner. That's where you try to avoid when you come to grading. If the corner does not look the same color as the rest of the card, then there's something wrong with it. Okay. Okay. You go to edges. When you go to edges, you should be looking as, as clean as possible. You shouldn't see any chipping. You shouldn't see any uh, whiteness. You shouldn't see any leftovers. Leftovers meaning the paper of the card, it's not even. Okay. with the consistency of the card. We go to centering, which is the most important, or actually surface. Surface, most people will not be able to tell by eye. We use our little tool here. This is one of the best in the market. Basically uh, magnifies everything up to 5,000. Oh, wow. Yes. So any small scratch or even any dust, I will catch it. Yeah. And a lot of people say, well, if it's dust, just dust it. No, some dust over time will stick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, centering. Most cards are made to be even on all sides. You look at the card, you look at the centering as basically the writing of the card. You have to look for the distance between the first part of the card and the second part of the card. Uh, if the distance are exactly equal on both sides, then you have good centering. Right. Okay? You look at the front and back. The name shouldn't be very close to the edge. At all time, they make it not to be very close to the edge for a reason is this card is meant to be in a holder, in a magnet, in a whatever. So if they put the name closer to the edge, that might be covered. So companies actually make these cards where the name is has a little room so it shows after you protect the card yeah yeah uh, surface it's very very easily to scratch these cards it's as easy as while you're trying to protect it you can damage it okay yeah. are there any tips or advice uh when it comes to centering how do you know uh, because some cards, they have a border, so maybe mm -hmm. it's a little easier to tell for centering. But a card like this, John yeah. Tavares, it's it's a bit more difficult to know if it's borderless. Well centered. Yes, you are, you are correct. Best way to look at it is to look at, for example, the young guns. Okay. You see the line here in the end of the G? There's a little space between that line and the edge of the card. Now, you come over here, you go take the very last step of the letter Y closer to the border. You look at that distance from the silver to the silver. If these two distances are pretty close or identical spacing, then you know that card is well-centered. So right now, just looking at it, at least to the naked eye, this would be a well-centered card. This is a well-centered card. Uh, really, it's an, 
it comes down to no matter how good you are, it comes down to the grader too, right? Mm -hmm. You might look at it and you say, this is a well-centered car, but he doesn't think so. Right. Okay. Uh, yes, it's a double-edged sword, but the best you can do is maximize your chances. Yeah. Now, when it comes to the surface, uh, and, and I do want to get to this tool here, mm -hmm. um, because you, like you said, this, this magnifies up to 5,000 times. Mm -hmm. um, so a, a lot of different collectors and uh, you know buyers and even sellers, they'll look at a card and maybe it looks great, but I know for a fact Mitch brought in an Acuna uh, a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and of course, since you have the best eye in the city, you were able to realize that it had a little nick. And maybe not to the, to the naked eye, but uh, so, what are we looking for here when we bust out this tool? When we're looking for is the best the best way to tell a card or to see a card is you need something like this. Maybe not to this size, but something similar. Something okay. that will do the job. And you need some lighting. It seems that most cards today come with a glossy finish. And when you have a glossy finish, you have a reflection under the light. So basically what do we do? is we get the card, hold it against the light, or of course, try to, when you look at cards, of course, being careful, try to look at the cards, actual card, nothing under plastic, nothing. If we look at the card like this, basically, all we have to do is tilt it slightly under the light. We see that glare, if you can see it. Yep. When you see that glare, that pretty much will show you any inconsistency that there is on the card. If there's a scratch, if there's a dust, if there's a miscoloration, or if there's a, which we call dings, like, uh, it's as simple as you stack two cards on top of each other without a top loader and one of them got dinged, right? Uh, as good as this tool is, grading companies have pieces that are much, much higher resolution, much better, mm -hmm. okay? So if you see it here, you can rest assured they'll see it there and they'll see it faster. For sure. Yeah. Uh, some cards are hard to get in gem mint, especially, for example, we'll take this year in particular, the uh, 910. Uh, for some reason, the young guns out of this year had a major, major problem with roller marks, okay? If you want to... Just to make it short, what a roller mark is, it's a printing flaw where a roller goes over the card to basically push it. And if that roll is not 100% clean or not the spacing, it's not 100% perfect, it will leave a slight line that it's very hard to see in a naked eye, okay. but very easy to see under a... I believe like I this. personally have a few cards like that mm -hmm. uh, with that type of print yeah. defect. Um, so my next question, Frank, is I just pulled a card and it's a beauty. Let's say it's a Zion since Mitch loves Zion. What's the best way to, I guess, protect it right out of a pack? First thing you do when you get a card, basically I strongly advise everybody that if you're about to open a pack of cards, the first thing you should have handy right next to you are soft sleeves. Okay. Okay. Uh, anything you pull immediately goes into the soft sleeves. Okay. That's the primary protection for that moment until you finish what you're doing and open your rest of your packs. Mm -hmm. uh, after you put everything in soft sleeve, now you know at least that if a card lands on top of it, you're not gonna get the ding problem or the scratches or whatever. Right. You can go about your business and finish the rest of your pack, but a top loader to start is the way to go. Unless you have the one-touch magnets, which are great for this. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you do pull a Zion, which it seems to be what the entire world is looking for, for sure. uh, one touch is always a good thing. Why? Because they are designed to leave space between the surface of the card and the magnet itself. And again, most one touches, or all of them today, if you can see, there's cuts in, to mm -hmm. protect the corner. So that corner will be kind of floating in the air. And if it's floating in the air, it's not touching anything, so it cannot be damaged. So Frank, now I have two Acunas. Mm -hmm. um, and what I want you to explain to me, um, because earlier, this was the card that you said wouldn't be a good grade. Uh, in my opinion, it is a good card, but can you explain to me why this wouldn't be a good card to grade? Uh, well, I mean, Acuna today is one of the up and comers and grading will increase their value huge, okay? But sometimes 
grading it's not just about putting a card in a slot. You grade in it to protect it, you okay. grade in it because you want the best, but most importantly, you grade in it because you increase its value. Uh, I, as you can, you guys have been dealing with me, I tell it to you up front, uh, if the card is not worth grading, I'll tell you it's not worth grading. I looked at this card closely. <clears throat> it's a beautiful card, very valuable card. Uh, centering is good. Edges are very clean. Corners are nice. However, after inspecting it here, right on up top of his head, we'll take the card out so it'll be easier to see. And that's the way to take cards out, by the way, for everybody. Right on top of his head here, it looks like there's a ding, which means... Okay, yeah, I can see it from yeah, this angle. you can see it from here. That is basically, dings are card killers. Okay. Yeah. Uh, corners, you have four corners, they judge on the average of all four corners. So if one corner is not as good as the others, maybe you'll drop half a point, okay? If two corners are not as good as the others, you drop, depending on how it is, half a point to a point. Oh, wow. A dig like this, you can assure that surface is going down a full point just for this. A full point? A full point wow. just for this thing. Wow. Yeah. So there you have it, guys. Uh, if you do have any dinged cards, definitely uh, maybe think twice before sending them off to yeah. get graded. Um, and then in comparison, um, this is a 9.5 Acuna uh, from a local company, Mint. Um, I've, I've heard many great things about men and personally I'm a fan. Uh, so can you explain why maybe this did receive a 9.5? Okay, uh, just to start that I totally agree with you, Mint is, in my opinion, one of my favorite companies and I've talked to them in the past and I'm like, they do good, clean job, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, I kind of support them and I would like one day to actually start working with them on a regular basis. Uh, they are not as popular yet, but they will be. Uh, there's, they have good future. Awesome. Okay. Uh, for this card here, you got to remember that tens are perfection. They're not easy to come by. A lot of people will get upset when they see nine fives. Oh, they should be tens. Nine fives all around is a great, great score here for, for any card. Okay, uh, when you look at the at this card, turn it against the light, you can see it's clean, clean surface. Okay, what now? People will say, well, if it's so, so clean and you're saying that it's the best card, or why is it a 9.5? You got to remember, there's only so much a human eye can see. Okay, and as I mentioned before, their tool is a lot stronger than whatever we can have on the open market. Uh, surface could also include a lot of other aspects. Color is one of them, okay? Uh, focus is another, okay? So 9.5, it's as close as you can come. I personally would be very happy if every card I grade comes 9.5. Right. Yeah. Simply, if you get a 10, it's a jackpot, but you get a 9.5 all around, it's great. Uh, corners, 9.5. Like I said, all corners have to be perfect to get your 10. Per I mean, by perfect, I mean like sharp edge, needle nose corner, right. no white in, same color, and that is hard to achieve. It's not easy to achieve. Simply because as when you pull the card out of the pack, if you didn't pull it co correctly, then that corner might have hit the, something yeah. else. But to get a 9.5, it's still great. Uh, this is a beauty of a card. This card would definitely, definitely sit in my collection with no complaints. For sure. Yeah. Are you on the uh, uh, the Ronald Acuna hype train? Uh, I've been on the Ronald Acuna hype train since Ronald Acuna started playing. Okay. <laughs> and it's uh, a lot of people think, why did you? Uh, why don't you tell anybody? Why don't you tell everybody that? Why would I? Why would I tell you that this card is going to be so valuable and I, then I'd have to pay for it three, four times what I normally do? <laughs> uh, that's yeah. true. So yeah. <laughs> for, for all you uh, subscribers, you yeah. uh, you're definitely getting a good yeah. deal with our budget videos. Yeah. So that's awesome. Uh, definitely mm -hmm. uh, appreciate the insight. Um, and like I said, uh, stay tuned for part two because we're actually going to be going over the differences between, you know, maybe Mint, BGS, PSA and then ultimately 
hopefully uh, you'll show me how to actually send off some of these cards to get graded. Of course, glad to do so. Awesome.